Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our service here at Online Bible Church. We are so glad that you've joined us and that you're a part of, of this movement and a part of uh, our little online fellowship here. And I would first like to mention and a little special greeting to all moms out there. Happy Mother's Day, whether you be a, a mom, a stepmom, a mom-in-law, a grandmom, a dog mom, a cat mom, a goldfish mom. Happy Mother's Day. And of course, if you are alive today, you can thank your mom. Praise the Lord. Uh, another announcement, Bible study, Wednesday night. Now, I finished, uh, I filmed this week's Bible study this morning, and we actually finished Romans chapter 6. And so that's something to celebrate. We've been spending three weeks in Romans chapter 6, and so we finally will conclude it Wednesday night, praise the Lord. So if you're not uh, studying the scriptures with us, we would like to welcome you to uh, join us Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. is when the video is uploaded. And we're studying the epistles of Paul, and it is quite an uh, a ambitious endeavor. It's going to take us quite a while to do that. And, uh, and if the Lord tarries, we're going to keep doing it. So praise the Lord. Uh, please join us Wednesday night where we study the Word of God verse by verse, that expository study that is so important. So we're going to get into praising the Lord this afternoon. A um, couple of choruses and a hymn that I'd like to sing. If you know the words, please sing along. If you don't, just listen. And let's worship the Lord together. Praise the Lord. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Who Jesus is, everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know, who Jesus is. Who is he? Well, he's the lily of the vine. sing of my joy since he came. I'm going to tell of his power every day and every hour. I'm going to lift up that wonderful name. Well, you can talk about world conditions, and you can talk about all that's gone wrong and you can state your views and positions but i'm gonna sing me a song i'm gonna lift up the name of jesus I'm going to sing of my joy since he came. I'm going to tell of his power every day and every hour. I'm going to lift up that wonderful name. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, wonderful Jesus. Bright morning star, lily of the valley, that's who you are. So glad I know you, oh yes I do. Wonder 
wonderful Jesus, thou art so true. Yes, wonderful Jesus, bright morning star, lily of the valley, that's who you are. So glad I know you, oh yes I do. Oh, wonderful Jesus, thou art so true. Let's sing it again. Wonderful Jesus, bright morning star, lily of the valley, that's who you are. So glad I know you, oh yes I do. Wonderful Jesus, thou art so true. Well, Jesus got a hold of my life, and he won't let me go. Jesus got into my heart and into my soul. I used to be oh so sad. But now I'm free and glad, since Jesus got a hold of my life, and he won't let me go. Well, Jesus got a hold of my life, and he won't let me go. Jesus got into my heart, and into my soul. I used to be oh so sad, but now I'm free and glad. Since Jesus got a hold of my life, and he won't let me go. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, worthy of honor and worthy of glory and Worthy of praise is he, worthy of honor and worthy of glory and worthy of praise is he. He has redeemed me by the blood of the Lamb and he set my spirit free. Worthy of honor and worthy of glory and worthy of praise is he. Praise the Lord. Let's sing a hymn. The hymn that I picked out today is one that we've sung a couple of times before. It's called Higher Ground. Let's sing it and worship the Lord together this afternoon. Well, I'm pressing on. The upward way, new heights I'm climbing every day, still praying as I onward go. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up. And let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My heart has no desire to stay where doubts arise and fears dismay though some may dwell where those abound my prayer my aim is higher ground Lord lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. Ah, 
higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to live above the world, though Satan's darts at me are hurled. For faith has caught the joyful sound, the songs of saints on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A Then I have found, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to scale the utmost height and catch a gleam of glory bright. But still I pray till heaven I found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on For higher ground. And we're going to talk today when we get into our sermon about looking up. And we're going to get there. But we're, first we're going to pray. And um, we're going to pray for Pastor Kirk Perry. Um, his mom, his mother passed away the other day and it was uh, fairly sudden from what I understand. She had a heart attack and she lives down east. And so I'm assuming that uh, that the family are, is uh, gathering together in New Brunswick. And um, it's very difficult to, to lose a loved one. And this is something, probably a boat, that just about every one of us has been in. But the good news is, she was a saved woman. She put her trust and her faith in Jesus Christ. And so when we lose a loved one, and we know that that person trusted in the Lord and trusted in the gospel, we know that they're in a much better place and they're going to be with Jesus Christ eternally. And the good news is that we will get to see them again. Of course, the bad news is that if you lose somebody who didn't know the Lord, and didn't trust in the gospel and in the blood of Jesus Christ, they're not um, at peace. They're not, um, they're not in a place of peace, but a place of torment. And so that's the urgency of preaching the gospel and hearing the gospel and getting the gospel of Jesus Christ out there. That is the urgency. And so we're going to pray for this family. We're going to pray that God will comfort them and, and uh, that they can rest in the fact that she is now with the Lord. Praise the Lord. And we're also going to pray for my wife, Samantha. She got her results from the um, echocardiogram a couple weeks ago and I mentioned that she has a heart murmur. It's something that she's probably had her whole life, but they're actually um, urging her to do a um, Holter monitor for 48 hours. And so we're going to pray for her that, uh, that God would uh, touch this problem 
that it will not be a complication, it will not be a problem. And so we're going to pray for these two needs today. And if you have any needs that you need to uh, bring to God's attention, please feel free to pray as well. And God can hear us. God, um, we can only hear one thing at a time. We can only concentrate on one thing at a time. But you can have a million and a billion people praying at the same time, and God will hear each one of those prayers. And so let's bow our heads and let's pray this afternoon. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that we are able to come before you and come before the throne of grace. We are able to cast our cares upon you, Lord, for we know that you care for us. And I want to pray, Lord, for these two needs that were mentioned today. I want to pray, Lord, for... Pastor Kirk Perry of Brockville Wesleyan Church and his whole family. I'm sure, I'm pretty sure there's a number of ministers in that group. And so I just want to pray, Lord, that you will be a, a comfort to this family, Lord, in their time of sorrow. We pray, God, that, uh, that you will be with them and you will comfort them and lift them up, Lord. And we're so thankful that uh, this lady was a saved lady that served you. And uh, she was a great soldier for you, Lord, and we are so thankful for that life. We celebrate that life today. I've never met this lady, but I've heard about her and heard about what a wonderful, warm person and a wonderful Christian she was. And so I just pray, God, that you will comfort the family, that you will be with that family, and let them have peace to know that she is with you now, and that they will get to see her again, Lord. I want to pray, Lord, for my wife, Samantha. We're so thankful that they were able to determine what was going on. And I and, um, want to pray, Lord, that as she goes and does this further test, that they further investigate what's going on. We pray, God, that you will be with her, that um, whatever problem is going on in her heart, whatever is causing this murmur, that I don't think they're too concerned about, they just want to investigate it and find out what exactly is going on. We pray, God, that you would heal that, that you would bring healing to that in Jesus' name. I'm so thankful for my wife, Samantha. She's been such a driving force behind me, and she's been uh, helping me through this ministry and encouraging me to keep going and keep proclaiming the truth, Lord. And, and so I just couldn't imagine what life would be like without her, Lord. And I just want to pray, God, that you will just... Uh, uh, bring healing to her, Lord, and that this problem that she seems to have, Lord, will not be an issue, will not be any be any uh, have any complications, Lord. And so we just pray that you will be with her and comfort her. In Jesus' name, I want to pray for the remainder of this service. I want to pray, God, that as I preach this message that I believe comes from you, I pray, God, that you'll give me the boldness and the anointing to be able to preach it with confidence and with boldness, and that somebody that's watching this video and this service today will need to hear this message. And that if they do need to hear it, Lord, we pray, God, that you will uh, give them ears to hear and a mind to understand your wonderful truth, and that it will bring comfort to people. We pray all of these things in the precious name of Jesus, and we'll be careful to give you all of the glory and all of the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, um, in preparing this message, I tend to put a lot of prayer into my sermons. And um, I always want to make sure that what I'm about to preach and what I put together is the absolute will of God. And uh, I do believe that this is what God would have me to preach today. And um, we're going to start, actually, a sermon series called Look Up Child. Now, this title of this message, or this sermon series, comes from a song by Lauren Daigle. And Lauren Daigle is a Christian singer, and she is actually my wife, Samantha. That's her favorite singer right now, is Lauren Daigle. And this is one, and she has a song called Look Up Child. And that's where the title of this message comes from. But the theology and the doctrine that I'm going to present to you today doesn't necessarily come from that song. When Lauren Dale sings about look up child, she's singing more about encouragement 
that when you're in sorrow and you're uh, having a hard time to look up at the Lord. And my meaning behind look up, child, is actually more of a physical look up because Jesus is coming soon. And that's what we're going to preach about today. That's my message today. We're going to talk about Jesus coming soon. And we're going to talk about the rapture that's going to happen very soon. Now, I've preached about the rapture before. In fact, this is uh, one of my favorite topics to preach on. I have three things that I love to preach on most. The rapture, end times, and the gospel. Salvation. Those are the three topics I would preach about every week, but God gives me more sometimes to preach. And so we're going to talk about the rapture today, and I'm just hoping that this will be a comfort to you. And our text is going to be in the book of First Thessalonians. We're going to go to the book of First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. And I want to read verses 13 to 18. That's going to be our text for today. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. And this passage of scripture is describing what is going to take place and transpire at the rapture. This is something that we've preached before. In fact, this passage of scripture I preached before, probably not quite a year ago. In fact, one of our first services when we first launched Online Bible uh, Church was the rapture. I talked about end times, and I believe that we are due for another end times and rapture message. Because I don't believe that the rapture is too far away. And the Bible says that no one knows the day or the, or the hour. But I believe that we as Bible-believing Christians will know the season. And I believe right now that we are in the season. It's going to be all kinds of things that happen prior, just prior to the rapture. It's going to be, the Bible says, it's going to be a great falling away. There's going to be apostasy in the last days. People are going to turn from the faith. And if you look at what's gone on in history, even in the last 200 years, you can see that as a fact. You can see with the springing up of all the cults, there's been a lot of cults, in fact most cults, that have come out, that are around today, came out in the last 200 years. We think about the Mormons, we think about the Jehovah Witnesses, we think about uh, Oneness Pentecostalism, we think about uh, Scientology and, and all kinds of false teachings out there. We see those things, but they didn't exist before the last 200 years. So I believe that we are living in the last days. If you think about it, also in the last 200 years, We've had corruptions of the Bible come out. We've had the Revised Standard Version. We've had the uh, New International Version. We've had the, the Message. We've had the uh, New Living Translation. We've had the, all kinds of translations. 
that have come out in the last 200 years that rob the glory of God. And when I say that, I mean they subtract. If you look at the NIV and you look at a King James Bible and you compare the two, there are whole missing verses, there are missing words, there are missing phrases, there's all kinds of stuff missing in new versions of the Bible. And so we've got the rise of cults, we've got the rise of perversions of God's word, and we've got the rise of atheism. And in fact, evolutionism became published in 1859 by Charles Darwin. And so, and ever since then, evolutionism, the religion of evolutionism, has been pushed and crammed down in our secular society. Society's becoming more secular. They don't want anything to do with God. Um, church memberships and church attendance has been declining. We have been a society of decline today. The rise of, of sexual perversions, homosexuality. Uh, now people are confused about male and female. You know, biology, basic, chapter one, page one, biology, male and female. A lot of denial of that and confusion surrounding that today. Um, there's been polygamy being pushed. There's even been pedophilia and, and pushes for the acceptance of pedophilia in today's society. And I don't believe, my friend, that we are too far away from the normalization of all sexual deviant. But where these are all prophesied that this is going to happen in the last days. And you can look around at society, and you can get pretty discouraged. You can get pretty despondent. You can get pretty upset and depressed at the state of the world today. But I want to give you a little bit of comfort today, just as Paul said in verse 18, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. The worse the world gets, the closer the coming of the Lord. And that's why I've titled my message, Look up, child, because I believe that we are in the season today where we need to start looking for the return of Jesus Christ. Amen? So we're going to dig into this passage of Scripture that we read, and I want to go back to verse 13. But I would not have you be, to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. Now, there's a couple of things that are mentioned here. Number one, Paul says we are not to be ignorant of this thing. Paul does not want us to be ignorant of the rapture. Paul wants us to know about it. Paul wants us to read about it and study it and look for it. The word ignorant today has become a bit of an insult. Oh, you're so ignorant. Don't be so ignorant. Well, the word ignorant here in this context simply means to not know, to be unlearned about something. Paul doesn't want us to not know about this. Paul wants us to understand and know about the doctrine of the rapture of the church. Another thing that's mentioned here in verse 13, that we sorrow not even as others which have no hope. You see, if you are an unsaved person today, if you have never trusted in the blood of Jesus Christ, and you are not saved, and your sins are not washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ, you have no hope. This rapture is not going to be for you. And in fact, you're going to have to be here and stay here during the terrible, terrible seven-year tribulation period. It's just the way it is. But we have a hope. Us as Christians, us as saved believers, as Bible believers, we have a hope that the world doesn't have. That as bad as the world has become, we're going to get to escape it. We're not going to see the Antichrist reign. Now we may see the Antichrist be revealed. We'll see who he is, but then we're gone. And so we're going to look at what's going to happen when that day comes. Let's go to verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus 
will God bring with him. So Paul is telling us that if we want to go in the rapture, we need to believe and trust in the gospel. We need to believe in Jesus Christ. If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, that, that's part of the gospel. The gospel, <coughs> in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4, tells us that we need to believe in the, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ for our sins. So Paul is saying that in order to go in the rapture, you need to believe in the gospel. That's the gospel that we are saved by today. But he also says about people which are asleep. Now these people that are asleep, that's not talking about people that are having a nap on the couch. Or somebody who's asleep in the middle of the night. This is actually talking about those dear saints that have passed away. That lady, we prayed for her family this morning. Pastor Kirk Perry's mom, she's included in this. My great-grandmother, Grandma Ruby Castleman, was probably one of the saintliest people you'd ever meet. She was such a wonderful, gentle soul. And so this is talking about those people, those saved Christians that have passed away. Well, guess what's going to happen? They're going to come back to life. They're going to come up out of their grave. And if they've been cremated, all of their particles are going to come back together. And they're going to rise bodily to meet Jesus Christ in the air. You ever heard that song? There ain't no grave going to hold my body down. Well, I'm going to tell you something right now. That if I died this afternoon and the rapture came tomorrow, there ain't no grave going to hold this body down. I'm going to go with Jesus Christ. I'm going to meet him in the air. Now what about those people that have not yet died? Those people that are alive when the rapture happens, which I believe anybody watching this video might actually be a part of. What's going to happen with us? Let's find out. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So those people that I just talked about a moment ago, those people that have passed away and are in the grave, they're going to come up out of their grave, and they're going to get a head start. Verse 17, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And so when Grandma Castleman's going up, I'm going to be going up too, and I'm going to be saying, Hi, Grandma! Good to see you. I haven't seen you in 12 years. It's been 10, 12 years, I think. She died in 2008, so yeah, I'd be, I'm horrible with math, so... <laughs> Somebody's probably putting in the comments right now. It's this many years. Whatever. But anyway, let's go back to verse 17. Sorry, verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now you will notice there are three things that are mentioned here that are going to happen right at that moment. It's going to be a shout, a voice of the archangel, and a trump of God. And we're going to talk about each one of those things. What is the shout? The shout, I have no Bible to prove this to you, but I believe it could probably be your name. The name of the believer. I can't prove it scripturally. But I can't disprove it scripturally either, and it seems to make the most sense. So the shout is likely going to be your name. The voice of the archangel. What is that voice of the archangel going to say? Well, he's probably going to say, come up hither. And why do I say that? Well, let's go to the book of Revelation, the fourth chapter in verse 1. Revelation chapter 4 
and verse 1, and we're going to see, come up hither. Revelation 4 and verse 1. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, if it were of a trumpet, talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will shew these things, which must be hereafter. So when John the Apostle was writing the book of Revelation, and he was invited spiritually up into heaven, he was told, Come up hither. Hither. So it's not a stretch to believe that the archangel will say to us at the rapture, come up hither. It's not a stretch. And the trump of God. Now I've heard all kinds of things about what that might possibly be. I've heard everything from President Donald J. Trump right through to the last feast of trumpets that occurs. And I can tell you right now, I do not believe it's going to be President Donald J. Trump. I just, I don't believe it. I believe the trump is the sound that a trumpet makes. A trumpet is the actual instrument. A trump is the sound that that instrument makes. And so if my theology is correct, and I believe it may be, here's what's going to happen at the rapture. Marty Reed, come up hither. Gone. That's probably what every single one of us that are saved and trust in the blood of Jesus Christ and trust in the gospel is going to hear at the very same time. We're going to hear our name, we're going to hear come up hither, and we're going to hear the sound of a trumpet. I can't prove it, but I can't disprove it. And so the dead people, we've already talked about this, the dead people that are in the graves are going to rise up out of their graves, and they're going to get a head start on us that are living and are going up to. So Christians who are alive will rise next. Now, in closing, because we're already 2.38, and I don't like to preach much beyond 2.40, you'll notice Paul says, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. I don't know about you, but I find the rapture to be a comfort. To know that as this world is waxing worse and worse as doth an old garment, to know that we're not going to have to endure the worst of it. If you've ever looked at Revelation, and I believe we're going to do this in a couple of weeks in this sermon series, we're going to look at the tribulation time. And we as Christians don't really need to worry about the tribulation because we're going to be gone before it happens. But I'm going to present it to you anyway so you know. I'm going to preach it anyway, just in case you're watching this video and you're following this ministry and you're not yet saved. Because I want you to understand what the tribulation is going to be like if you don't get saved. We're not going to talk about that today. We're probably going to talk about that in a couple of weeks. But I want you to understand how horrible and what a time of death and destruction that seven-year tribulation period is going to be. It's called the time of Jacob's trouble. And that comes from the Old Testament. That comes from the old covenants that God had with Israel. You see, when Jesus came to earth, as a man, as a minister, before he was crucified, he was the Jewish Messiah. And he actually said that I have come not but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And that's why we need to be very careful about pulling doctrines.
from the word of Jesus Christ because it's for the Jews. It's not for this dispensation. He's talking a lot about the millennial kingdom, which we're not in yet. And when the Jews rejected the Messiah, God raised up Paul to go to the Gentiles. Now, I'm not saying that, G, that uh, Paul only preached to Gentiles. He did preach to Jews as well. In fact, whenever he went to a city, he would go to the synagogue first and preach, and then he would go and preach to the Gentiles. So he still uh, wanted to preach to those Jews. But God said, now we're going to go to the Gentiles. We're going to allow the Gentiles to get saved. And so the whole church age is like a parenthesis. God deals with the Jews all through the Old Testament. Jesus came as Messiah to deal with the Jews. The Jews rejected that Messiah. Jesus was crucified. The early church and the early apostles still preached to the Jews, and they reject him, and they stone Stephen. And so they rejected it, and God said, now we're going to go to the Gentiles. But God's not finished with the Jews. God's going to go back to dealing with the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. And if you look back and you've got your theology correct from the Old Testament, you will know that Jacob is Israel. There was Abraham, there was Isaac, there was Jacob, and Jacob's name was changed to Israel. And so Jacob was the father of the Jewish nation. And so when we talk about the, the tribulation period and we talk about that time, we call it the time of Jacob's trouble, we're calling it the time of trouble for Israel. Because God's going to go back to dealing with the nation of Israel. And he's going to do it in the tribulation once the church is out of the way. So I spent a lot of time saying that and we've gone over our time. But we're going to get into that in a couple of weeks. But I just want you to know how important it is to get saved now while we're still on the earth. Because if you get saved this minute, if the next minute the rapture happens, you get to go. I heard the story about a man, and it's actually kind of a proverb, about an old man that waited till the 11th hour to get saved. He kept putting it off. But he died at 10.30. Don't put it off. If you're not saved, watching this video today, we're going to go to the gospel. I wasn't going to do this, and I don't know if we have time to do it, but I'm going to do it anyway. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. Because I want you to hear the gospel. And I want you to understand it. The Bible says, Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So if you want to get saved, you need to hear the gospel. So I'm going to read it to you right now. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If you underline your Bible, underline that word saved. This is what we're saved by. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. That's the Gospel, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ for your sins. If you put your trust in that, if you put your trust in the blood that was shed on Calvary, on the cross, you are saved. And so if you're watching this video right now, and you have never trusted in Jesus Christ, to save you from your sins. I'm urging you to do it right now. Because this rapture is coming. It could be in five minutes. It could be in five years. But we need to be ready. And we need to be saved. I just want to sing a little chorus. Just to close this service. It's called Some Golden Daybreak. That's what we're waiting for. Some Golden Daybreak. 
some golden daybreak, Jesus will come. Some golden daybreak, battles all won, will shout the victory. Some golden daybreak for me, for you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for that day. We are so thankful that you are going to come any time now and rapture us out. What a wonderful day that's going to be. And I'm praying that anybody that's watching this video right now, I pray, Lord, they will see the sense of urgency. And they will get saved and they will get right with you, Lord. That's what the whole purpose of this ministry is, is souls. We want to bring as many souls with us when we go in the rapture as we can. So I just want to pray, Lord, again for Pastor Perry. I want to pray for his family. Um, for his mom that passed away, Lord, I pray that you'll just comfort that family and be with them and be their portion in Jesus' name. I want to pray for my wife, Samantha, as she does this Holter monitor. I pray, Lord, that everything will work out. They don't appear to be too concerned about the heart murmur. They just want to kind of get to the bottom of it. So I just pray, Lord, that it will not uh, uh, create any, um, any condition, that it will not create any complication, Lord, and this is something that she's probably been having her whole life, and it went unnoticed, and so I just want to pray, Lord, that you'll just be with her, and, and that when they do this other test, they look and they say, what heart murmur? There's no heart murmur, it's gone. That's what we pray for, Lord, and so I just want to pray, God, for everybody watching this video, I want to pray, Lord, that this message brought them comfort, but if they're not saved, Lord, I pray this message brought them a sense of urgency. They need to get saved. And so, Lord, I will pray that you will be with each one of us this week. Lord, that we'll have a good week and that you'll be with us, Lord. Pray, God, that you'll bring us back Sunday, or, uh, Wednesday night for Bible study as we finish up Romans chapter 6. And I pray, God, that you'll bring us all back again next week. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, just any day now... Our Lord is coming, He'll be returning for you and me. For I've been watching, and I've been waiting, and just any day now, His I'll see. Praise the Lord. So until next week, God bless.